Hi everybody, I'm Doug Keeling, and today we're going to digitally build some Lego text. Now traditionally my tutorials have all centered around Photoshop, but in this case we're going to switch things up a little bit and render an image that can then be used in Photoshop or other image editors. Now wait a second before you click off because you don't want to learn a 3D modeling program. Um, this one is really easy to use because all it does is builds with Lego, and if you enjoy Lego at all, I think you're going to have a lot of fun. So stick with me here and let's have some fun. As a disclaimer, I'm not in any way affiliated with Lego. Lego is a trademark of the Lego group of companies which does not sponsor, authorize, or endorse this video tutorial. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is go to bricklink.com. I'll have a link in the description to their website. And you're going to go up to the Build tab. That takes you to this uh, page that says Build with Studio. And you can see there's a free download of a program here for PC and for Mac. And if you scroll down through, you can see what all it's for. It's basically for building Lego models, um, sharing them, and even ordering the parts to be able to build them. But uh, in this case, we're not going to be doing any of that. We're just going to use this as a mechanism to digitally build with Legos and then export, uh, render those graphics so that we can use them in Photoshop for whatever kind of design that you want to create. So go ahead and download that. It'll take just a couple minutes. Uh, the installation process is really straightforward. Go through that and come back to the video when you are ready to go and you have the program open. All right, so when you first open up Studio, you're going to have um, this kind of welcome screen, and what you're gonna do is start a new build. And you might be hiding your parts palette. This is the building palette down here. And so you've got a whole list of all the available Lego parts that have basically ever been made or that are available. Over here on the right, you've got a color palette that you can choose from. And you don't really have to know a whole lot about this to start working. Let's go um, down to the bricks. We're, we're basically just going to start off using nothing but bricks. So go down to the building palette, choose brick, and just regular brick right underneath that. So here you can see um, all of the various Lego bricks that are available. They're currently all white because the white color is selected, but you can put them on here and then change the color and so forth later. So I'm not going to worry about that right now. So for the most part, we're going to be sticking with um, you know, a number of a number of these common like two by two bricks or like a two by six. We're gonna we're gonna basically assume that our text is going to be six studs wide. So let's grab a two by six block and let's just make an L since we're dealing with Lego. So you can see I just clicked it, drug it out there, and you just set it right on the ground, the, the building plane. Now <clears throat> if you want to rotate this around, I've clicked it again and you can use your arrow keys left and right. Um, you can even use up and down and that flips it upside down and so forth. You don't really need to do a whole lot of that. You'll typically just need to, to worry about rotating it left and right. Now you can zoom out using various controls with like your mouse wheel. You can zoom in and out. Um, you can hit the space bar and it kind of works like the hand tool in Photoshop or you can pan if, you're, if you press space bar and uh, just click with your mouse. If you right click and drag, you can rotate around and then you can do command plus or minus on your keyboard or you can use the zoom tools, um, but it's easier with the shortcuts, command plus or minus to zoom in and out. So like I said, I'm gonna make an L and so we've got the base of our L. Now I need a bunch of these two by two bricks. So I click that, I drag it out here and I place it. Now I can just keep dragging right from the palette. That gets old quickly. So what you can do is just click on the brick you want to copy and then just do simple copy and paste command. So um, control C and control V. Uh, just do that. Paste, 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 and I moved that one. You can hit delete if you get an extra one. So I've got, let's see, we've got six studs across and let's go how many bricks high should we go we've got one two three four five let's go up to seven so we'll just do two more bricks if you hold down the command or control button you can select multiples so i'm going to hit command c and command v all right so there i have an l and i'm going to zoom out and just kind of rotate around that and you can see my l is fine 
that's good. And I'm going to select all of these bricks just by drawing a, a box around them. If you just click off of them and draw a box to select. And let's make these bricks blue. And keeping in mind that I've got that six stud wide kind of a baseline that I want to go with, I'm going to copy this um, two by six brick here. I'm going to Command C, Command V, paste that. I'm going to put it uh, like one stud apart from that one. And this is going to be the foundation of uh, the letter E. And we're going to just make the word Lego. How about that? All right, so um, we're going to go ahead and grab a couple of those, copy and paste them. We're going to grab, let's see, we'll make our middle slab of the E a little shorter. So let's use a 2 by 4 brick. And this should, for the most part, try to place it on there. If it, if it doesn't and you find you're running into some issues, just change your view so that you can place those on there. All right, so again, don't worry that these don't match. I'm going to copy and paste two more of those. I'm going to copy and paste the bottom one so that we have an E. There we go. And then I'm going to select all of those, and I'm going to change this color to, let's go something in the yellow scheme. We have yellow. All right, so there we go. Let's grab another 2 by 6 brick from the palette. Place it kind of in line there. And then I'm going to grab a whole bunch more of these 2 by 2s and we'll grab even more of those guys, even more of those, and get rid of the top one, grab the 2 by 6 at the top, maybe come down and put one underneath there. And yeah, I think I like the higher G and it matches up with the same level of the E there. I'm going to select all of those and let's go with just some classic Lego colors. So I'm going to go with green and now we have to just create an O. Now this is going to be real easy. So let's just grab a long strand of these uh, two by two bricks. Again, selecting them all, copy and paste. And I'm just going to paste again. I've already copied. I'm going to grab the bottom one and paste that one. Copy that and paste it. And again, you can use white because that's a standard color, but let's go with, uh, let's go with red. So if we just uh, collapse this palette down at the bottom and I'm going to zoom out, let's rotate around a little bit and kind of pan and scoot it so that we have this, this looks pretty good right there. Next thing we're going to do is go up to render. The render window comes up and you can see you have a few different options there. You've got a save as, you choose your location, you determine which file type you want to save it as. If you, if you choose a PNG file, you can have a transparent background and so you can then, if you choose PNG, that enables this button to be checked up there. You can change the render quality from either um, low to medium to very high or you can customize it completely. Um, if you go with the very highest quality settings, you know, where you show the little logo on top of each stud and use the high quality model, everything amped up to the extreme, um, then it's going to take a pretty long time to render that. Then you can choose the image size that you want to render. So, and it tells you the aspect ratio. You've got uh, typical like 4 by 3, then you've got 16 by 9, and you have a few different um, sizes to choose from. So let's go uh, with a 4 by 3 ratio and we'll leave it at landscape. Make sure your model fits in there. And if you need to change the view of how this is looking, you can use your same um, pan tools. Like you can uh, click and drag and move it to you know pan sort of right and left and up and down. And if you right click, you can rotate it around and so forth. I'm just going to put it back you know, somewhere about like that. And then go ahead and click render. Alright, so we've got a nice transparent PNG here that we can move around and manipulate. And so I'm just going to add a new layer underneath that one and I'll just fill it with black so you can kind of see it on black. Uh, Command I and invert that so you can see it on white. And if you zoom in, you can see that you've got some really nice qualities uh, to this render. You've got some, you know, highlights on the studs here and 
Uh, it has an overall really plasticky kind of feel that you would expect out of Lego bricks. And uh, you've also got some reflections and so forth in there. Now, the one thing that you miss when you do a PNG file rather than um, a JPEG is the shadows that would fall on the ground plane and behind it and so forth. So if you want more of you know an, an authentic like shadow type rendering, um, then you'll need to choose a JPEG for that. So and the nice thing is that now that we have these letters, you can rearrange these in studio and adjust them to get you know the rendering that you want. Um, this looks okay for now, but let's try overlapping them or doing something a little bit different. The first thing I'm going to do is grab and select all of these and I'm going to press command G and it's basically making a sub model or kind of a group so we'll call that uh, L it's for the letter L and then we're just going to repeat this process over for E, G and O Okay, so if we examine this rendering a little closer, you can see that we have some shadows on the ground here by doing a JPEG, and we get some nice overlapping there. It just gives the whole the uh, whole image a little more dimension. If you go to this one, you can see that we've got some overlapping here. This one is based on using the Lego base plates, and here we're using one by one base plates to build up, and we've got a, a uh, kind of a, if you imagine a square around this, you've got a three stud by uh, seven plate high grid, I guess, that you're working from. Finding parts and looking through all the parts can sometimes be a bit of a challenge on here because it's not like looking through a pile of Legos on the floor. Um, you know, you're looking through, you've got all kinds of different uh, options to go through, but the big ones that you need to know or for anything flat that you want, you're gonna use a, I mean perfectly flat as in smooth, you're gonna use a tile. And then there are also uh, plates, and that's what I used for the kind of seven high by three wide system. And then your standard bricks. So scroll up and just choose brick. So at this point, I'm just gonna speed things up and uh, show you a few different options for text and how you can create some things. Alright, I think that about wraps things up for this tutorial. If you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, DO IT! JUST DO IT! You can also find me on Facebook and Instagram, so check the description for those links. Alright, see you in the next tutorial.